Okay. So today I'm going to sketch the, um, you know, the proof um, that the scanning map from um, configuration spaces to the space of sections is a homology equivalence in a range. Uh, yeah, so uh, first we'll sort of talk about relative configurations, then we'll talk about homology vibrations, and then we'll prove the theorem. Yeah, so the, the main theorem we're interested in is that um, the scanning map from the space of, of um, configurations of K unordered distinct points in the manifold is, um, or there's a scanning map that goes from there to the space of degree K sections of the um, fiber-wise one-point configuration of the tangent bundle. So at each, um, you take the tangent space and you add, you replace all of the RNs with spheres you know, which we view as their one point compactification. And then this uh, delta means that, um, you know, you should view uh, M, you know, as the interior of a compact manifold, and you require that the sections take uh, the value of base point at infinity, um, depending on your model of the, um, of the scanning map, the base point will either be um, zero or, um, or infinity. Okay. And uh, you know, so last class, we talked about the construction of the scanning map. Oh, yeah. Um, and so today we're going to prove this theorem, which says that in a range that it induces an isomorphism in homology, um, the, you know, in a range increasing with a number of points. Okay. And we talked about at least for, um, for non-compact manifolds, it suffices to to prove this theorem, it suffices to prove that in the limit, as the number of points tends to infinity, the scanning map induces an isomorphism of homology. Because you know, homological stability lets us um, say in a range, this agrees with um, you know, the homology for just a fixed K. I guess this is like an arrange. And um, yeah, so this ISO uses homological stability. And then the, the stabilization maps for um, the, the space of sections, all of them are homotopy equivalences. So uh, in all degrees, this is isomorphic to that. So, you know, to prove this is an ISO in a range, we just need to prove that this is an ISO in all degrees. So that's uh, our goal. Um, yeah, and I guess here we need the manifold to be not not compact, in, or you know, to the interior of a manifold with non-empty boundary in order to find the stabilization maps. I should have added that to this theorem. Okay. Uh, and then eventually we'll talk about how to remove the assumption that the manifold is compact. So one thing to note that this is really like a homology um, um, you know, statement. It's this scanning map is not going to be a, homot a homotopy equivalence in a range. You know, it's not going to induce an isomorphism on homotopy groups. So let's see. Um, um, yeah, so what, let's say n is bigger than 2, then the fundamental group of the configuration space um, is, you know, is, uh, points in Rn is just a symmetric group. And so as k tends to infinity, you just get the, the union of the symmetric groups, which is, I'm going to call S infinity. So this you should think of as the set of bijections of, of um the natural numbers that um, only move finitely many natural numbers. Yeah, but in particular, you know, this is some infinite non-abelian group. On the other hand, um, you know, when for n greater than two, pi one of um, this the space of sections is just the loop space. Um, so. Um, the uh, 
pi one of this um, this loop space is you know because the stabilization maps are homotopy equivalences is the same thing as the um, I guess the Hoko limb should be inside the should be inside there um, the same thing as pi one of the homotopy co-limit um, which you know is the, I guess the, the natural isomorphism is these two are you know um, I want of a loop space of a connect of a loop space is the same thing as of an n-fold loop space is the same thing as pi n plus one of uh, whatever space you're considering. So we just get pi n plus one of the sphere, which is um, z mod two. Yeah, and so um, these two groups are not isomorphic because you know this group is an infinite non-abelian group, and this is a finite abelian group. So definitely they're they're not isomorphic. Any questions? Yeah, so there's something, like the fact that we're working with homology is is actually essential. Um, oh yeah, so a remark, if you abelianize um, the symmetric group, you're just gonna get Z mod two. So, uh, although these two things are not equal, uh, they're equal after abelianization. Um, yeah. Anyone off the top of their head think of an example showing that for higher homotopy groups, configuration spaces and these section spaces are different? So what's, what is pi two, let's say, KR2. So what is this is like let's pick on Zach. Zach, what are can you tell me at least one of these groups? One of them is easy. Isn't like the well the lower one's easy, right? It's like uh, the S two. Yeah, so this is for S two, and then this is actually oh yeah. So anyone, if you know about the hot vibration, this is you can see the same thing as pi four S three, which then I just said is Z mod two. Oh. Um. And what's um. Yeah. Any takers on? Okay, so Zach got the hard one. I was, any takers on the easier group? What's an easier group than Z mod two? I guess this was the point of la uh, last two. You know, what did we prove last Tuesday? Um, oh yeah, so so last Tuesday we proved that these spaces are are island bergen clayton spaces in, um, for their fundamental group. So, you know, last Tuesday we proved that they, you know, the configuration spaces have contractible universal covers. Or configuration spaces of surfaces that aren't S2 or RP2 have contractible universal covers. So the, all their higher homotopy groups are zero. Um, yeah. So, you know, whatever. In particular, these two groups are never. Pi two of configurations of points in R two is never equal to pi two of the section space, and there isn't like as nice of a relationship as for pi one, where it's just the abelianization. Any questions? Okay. So, uh, yeah. So I think 
last time we defined relative configuration spaces. So just the configuration space without a subscript means the disjoint union of all, of all configuration spaces. And then if um, you have a, sub, a, a subspace n contained in, in your manifold, then the relative configuration space is just the quotient by the relation that if, um, if you have a point in n, it vanishes. So what you should think of, you know, if the cylinder is m and the, the blue end is n, then it's like points in m minus n, but with a topology where the point vanishes if it, um, you know, converges to n. Okay. And um, so we, you know, there's um, a sort of relative version of the section space. So th these are going to be sections that um, they are defined on m minus n, and they, um, oh, maybe I'll draw a picture. Let's say this thing is m. And this part of the boundary is n. Yeah. So, um, so uh, the usual section space, the usual space of sections, ha has the condition that. Um, the sections need to have the base point value uh, at the boundary. So here, the the sections would have to um, yeah. So the uh, so the usual section space, the sections are defined on all of M, and they um, what you call it. And they have to take value, you know, let's say infinity on the boundary. So here would be, you know, sections of the disk, or you know, they'd be possibly infinite vector fields on the disk with value infinity on the boundary of the disk. But let's say n is like this portion of the boundary, and then that little strip, they would be sections on the complement. And so then, like this part of the boundary, they would need to take value infinity. But um, you know, there would be sort of no condition. On the sections uh, on this part of the boundary. Yeah, so it's it's um, it's sections defined on um, uh, yeah. So it's it's like sections of the um, Yeah, so the, the target, you know, so we're going to define a scanning map for, um, or, you know, so th there's going to be a scanning map for relative configuration spaces. And um, the idea is you should think that there are no points. The idea is you should think that there are no points in N. So we only need, so the section is only going to be defined on M minus N. And then um, we're going to have, um, Uh, sort of like points can enter n and then vanish. So we don't want any um, like base point conditions in n. I don't, don't think I said that well. Yeah, but maybe let's see what it is in, in, in examples. So, um, you yeah, know, so for, yeah, oh yeah, so the, the theorem is going to be that if if pi zero from the n, pi zero of n to pi zero of m is surjective, then uh, the scanning map from configurations uh, to the space of sections is a homotopy equivalence. Yeah, so in the case that m is a disk and n is a sphere, the um, then 
this, what this theorem says that the configurations of points in a disk are all sphere. So that's what conf n m is. Uh, so then that's the sections um, rel n. So that's just maps of a disk minus um, its boundary sphere to a sphere. Uh, and there's no base point conditions here. And this, this space is, uh, is contractible. So maps from a contractible space. Some other space just has the homotopy type of the, the codomain. So this, you know, the scanning theorem in the case of a disk rel its boundary tells us that configurations of points in a disk rel the sphere is homotopy equivalent to a sphere, which is something that we uh, talked about last time. Okay, and now, now what happens if you take n to be the um, the empty set? Well, then configurations of points in M rel n is just configurations of points in a disk. And um, then the section space, you know, the tangent bundle is trivial, uh, ends up just being the space of maps of um, from a disk rel its boundary to a sphere rel infinity. So that's what happens if you, you know, use the bundle as trivial. Um, so, you know, this is maps from a disk sending a sphere to a point is the same thing as uh, iterated loop space. So, uh, the target of the scanning map is loops n, sn, and we just talked about how these are not homotopy equivalent. So, yeah, and so this shows that we need this uh, assumption that pi zero n, pi zero m is surjective. If we didn't have this assumption, well, you could just take n to be the empty set, and it would say configuration spaces are homotopy equivalent to section spaces. And you know that's not going to be true in general. The theorem we're going to prove is just uh, you know the map induces a homology equivalence in a range. Any questions? Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, for most of this time, the, this class is going to be fairly sketchy. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'll just sketch proof. So how, how do we prove this theorem? Um, you know, we're going to prove it similar in a similar way to the way we proved that the, um, uh, uh, the way we proved uh, space level Poincare duality. So we'll prove it by induction. We'll induct, we'll pick a handle decomposition of M that's in some way compatible with N. And uh, the base case will be that M is a disk and N is a, um, its sphere. So you know, here I presented this as an example of the theorem, but uh, Last class, we already proved this. So this will serve the induction beginning. Um, yeah, and then we'll use quasi vibrations to get long exact sequences in homotopy groups. Then we'll use the you know the five lemma. Um, okay, or and by like we will, I mean like, we won't. This is just like a proof sketch. Um, yeah, so. You know, recall that a, a map is a quasi-fibration if um, if the inclusion of all the fibers into the homotopy fiber into the homotopy fibers induce isomorphisms on homotopy fibers. So the the homotopy fiber is um, yeah. So it turns out like up to homotopy is independent of construction. So what you do is you just replace your A with a space that's homotopy equivalent to A. Um, and replace P with a map to, uh, from this new space to B, um, you know, such that that new map is a, is a vibration, and you know, such that your chosen homotopy equivalence to A makes the relevant diagram commute. So basically, what you, you know, and then the homotopy fibers are just the fibers of that. So what you do is you just replace P by a vibration, and then the homotopy fibers are the actual fibers of the vibrant replacement of P. Uh, yeah, and there's a functorial construction involving paths and loops that I talked about, but um, you know, 
may or may not be able to produce the definition of off the top of my head. Yeah, so being quasi-fibration basically just means that the fibers have the right homotopy type. It's slightly stronger than that. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's sort of the minimal condition needed for um, there to be a long exact sequence in homotopy. Yeah, so if you, if you have a quasi-fibration, then you get a long exact sequence in homotopy groups, like a domain or you know, fiber domain range. Um, you know, which this is needed for the um, you know, five level arguments. So you know, if you want to prove something about the homotopy groups of A, you can prove it about the homotopy groups of B and the fiber. Okay, so uh, yeah, so in, when we were proving non-abelian Poincaré duality, the the main lemma um, was that the map from the free, free abelian group on X to the free abelian group on Y is a quasi-fibration with fibers Z of Y, free abelian group on Y. Um, so you know, the, the analogous statement to this proposition would be, you might assume that the map from the configurations of points in M to the relative configuration space should be a quasi-fibration, um, you know, and I guess like maybe with the fibers are gonna be, we're gonna be, you know, the pre-image of Configurations. Oh, yeah, this map is P. Are going to be. Yeah, so the. It is true that the fibers of this map are configurations of points in N. Um, yeah, but, um, but this map is not a quasi fibration. So for example, let's take M to be um, square, so I guess strip um, my picture of M. Um, so this whole region is M and then N is the um, bottom row of the strip. Um, yeah, so if this map were a quasi-fibration, um, then we should get a short exact sequence of homotopy groups. So uh, any takers on what uh, what's the... Um, I don't even remember. What, yeah, so what's I1 of... Um, Configurations of points on M. Oh yeah, so one thing to say is um, configurations of points in a manifold has the same homotopy type as configurations, or let's say configurations of points in a manifold with boundary has the same homotopy type as configurations of points in the interior. So that will like fix a lot of me being sloppy about manifolds versus um, manifolds with boundary containing them. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be the same thing as, you know, conf R2, which is going to be, um, depending on, you know, it's going to be uh, the brain group, and, you know, K is going to depend on what, it, you know, the space is not connected, so it'll depend on which connected component you pick. Yeah. Um, so N is... Um, yeah, any guess that like N is I'm missing a pi one up here, whatever. Um uh, what, what's the homotopy type of configurations of points in R? Any any guesses? So N is just R. So I'm asking, like, 
What's the fundamental group of configurations of points in R? Yeah, Michael guesses trivial. Yeah, so this is zero or one. Maybe we're not abelian group, so we should call it one. Yeah, so the idea is if you have um, configurations of points in R, they can't go around each other. Um, yeah, if you have configurations of points in R, um, you know, what you have, you, it's uniquely determined by like, where is the leftmost point? And then what's the distance between the, the like second, you know, order them from the left. So where is the leftmost point? What's, um, what's the distance between the, um, second and the first point? What's the distance between the third and the second point, et cetera? And so, uh, you, you know, up to homotopy, you can just, you know, move the configuration so the leftmost point is at zero, and then all the distances are one or something. So you get that, you know, just configurations of points and the natural numbers are contractible. Intuitively, like, they can't go around each other. If you took ordered configurations, um, the connected components would be contractible, but um, pi zero would be, um, you know, or there'd be n fa k factorial connected. Um, you know, I guess if you pick the configuration space of k ordered points, pi zero would be um, size k factorial. Oh yeah, I guess I should say this configuration space, they are different connected components because they didn't write sub k. So each one is contractible. And then what's pi one? Oh yeah, so um, what's the homotopy type of the relative configuration space? Any any guesses? Yeah, it's the exact guesses. Yeah, it's zero. Yeah, it's this one. Um, so yeah, I guess configurations of points in N is not. Um, it's not contractible, but each component are, is contractible. This whole thing is contractible. Oops, there's a typo. This should be a one. This is, I meant to write n here. A typo. Oh, yeah, it didn't persist here. Yeah, so what you can do is just you have points in M. You just sort of shove them all down into n, and then all the points vanish. Um... So this is one, this is one, but this is some complicated, you know. Yeah, so, um, and if you're like, well, how do we know? Maybe the braid group is, is trivial. Well, you can abelianize and check that the abelianization of the braid group is Z. So braid group is definitely not trivial, so this sequence can't be exact. Yeah, so this map is not going to be a quasi-vibration in general. Um, but, you know, the problem sort of is that we didn't, like, we wanted M to be a relative configuration space also. Um, yeah, so this is the following proposition. Um, yeah, so that... Um, uh, I guess I got confused about what should be what we should name all these things, so I just changed all the names. So let's say we have this manifold W, and we have subspaces P and Q. And let's see, maybe maybe I want P to be a manifold. Uh, and let's assume that pi zero of the intersection of P and Q to Q is surjective. Then this map on relative configuration spaces is a quasi vibration with fiber. This. So basically, you, you know, you just like um, this theory works well if basically everything is a quasi is everything is a relative configuration space. So you want the fibers and the um, total space and the base to all be relative configuration spaces. So I guess here in this example, P is the red, Q is the blue, and W is um, this whole torus thing. So um, yeah, so what you do is you, know, you map configurations rel the red to configurations rel the red and the blue. 
And then the, the fiber is going to be configurations of points in the blue, rel the red. Um, yeah. And under under certain assumptions, this is a this is a quasi fibration. So um, how do you prove things are quasi fibrations? Well, there's this dull Tom quasi fibration criteria, and um, this sort of um, everything is sort of um, I would say point set topological except for this condition. So you know, I guess what's what's the idea? Let me go and see what the idea is. The idea is you. Um, you know, we talked about this earlier, and um, yeah, but so you write your space as the union of these subspaces. You, um, you write your the base space, and what you assume is that you assume that on the um, differences, the um, your map is a quasi fibration, which like maybe you'll check by checking that it's a fiber bundle or a fibration or a product or something, and then you assume that they're open sets. Um, in between, in between you, uh, the uh, terms in your in your filtration, um, and sort of deformation retracts of the um, pullback, um, such that um, it sort of identifies fibers along homotopy equivalences. So, you know, if you're like, okay, this is this theorem looks long, I don't want to read it. What you should think of is basically if you build a space out of things that are, you know, if you build a space by gluing vibrations along maps that, you know, uh, are homotopy equivalences on the fibers, you get a quasi vibration. That, that's what this theorem is roughly saying. So, uh, what I'm Going to do is I'm going to tell you sort of what are these maps in the case that um, is needed for this proposition, and then once we have this proposition, we can prove scanning for relative configuration spaces um, via you know usual handle induction. Okay, so you know this condition four, and the um, the the observation is that that these uh, maps on the fibers are going to be stabilization maps for relative configuration spaces. So, um, yeah, so, you know, if you have, a, you have a manifold and you're looking at this relative configuration space, you can build this stabilization map by gluing on a collar and adding a new point there. And then um, the, the comment is that you know, uh, you know? Let's say you're you're stabilizing using some component of the, the boundary. If um, if pi zero of uh, n, so here we're, you know we're looking at comp m rel n. Um, if if n meets the component of the boundary that you're using to define the stabilization map. Then the stabilization map is a homotopy equivalence. Yeah. So what you should do, you should look at you know this picture. So what's happening? I don't know. I want to annotate. But yeah. So we have a stabilization map. Ignore the red for the moment. Uh, we have a stabilization map, which basically puts a point over here. And why is that homotopic to the identity? Well, you can just sort of walk that point into the region where it vanishes. Um, so that's, you know, that's just a path from the stabilization map to the identity. Um, yeah, and that's, that's the type of thing that you are going to need to check when checking condition four. Um, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so that, that that checks the quasi vibration criteria um, up, you know, used to apply to prove this proposition. And then 
then that lets us prove that the scanning map for relative configuration spaces is a homotopy equivalence under certain assumptions about pi zero of the natural numbers meeting, you know, or basically this says that every connected component of M has part of N in it. Okay. And, you know, other than needing to worry about this condition, the proof is very similar to um, this scanning for uh, free abelian groups. Any questions? I think the class will get more understandable after this lecture, at least for the next three lectures. So, this, you know, we're, we'll be doing definitions instead of proofs. Those are always more fun. Okay. Um, yeah. So we want to prove a theorem about homology, and there's um, that some concept. Uh, similar to a quasi-fibration called homology fibrations. So you know, the definition is a map is a homology fibration if um, if the inclusion of the fibers into the homotopy fibers are isomorphisms on homology. Quasi-fibration would be an isomorphism on homotopy groups. Here we're assuming it's an isomorphism on homology. Um, yeah. So proposition. So, oh yeah, so what it says is that um, um, oh yeah, so if, um, let's say you, you have subspaces N and H of M, and uh, let's say the boundary of M is not entirely contained in N, um, but but still N meets the boundary, so pi zero of N intersect M, intersect the boundary, surjects onto the, the boundary, so you know every component of the boundary has a has part of N in it. Then um, um, oh yeah, so then the map from configurations of points in M, rel N, um, stabilized with respect to, the, you know, sorry. So, um, yeah, so then a statement is that like this, um, um, yeah, so, Okay, so we can look at configurations of points in M, rel H, and map it to configurations of points in N, union H. The statement is that this is a homology fibration after you um, replace these spaces by their homotopy co-limits um, under, like, you know, uh, under the stabilization maps. Uh, and, you know, this is a weaker condition on... Um, you know, you're like, okay, how does this theorem differ from the previous theorem? Why is it better? Uh, or, you know, why is it at least different? So here, there are no conditions on H. So H in particular could be empty. Uh, yeah, so here's a picture, I guess, where H is empty. And um, this blue thing is, the light, the light blue is, is N. Uh, yeah, so you have configurations in M, you map it to configurations in N, and this is, um, and then the fibers are going to be configurations in N, and this is not going to be, um, be a, a homology fibration, but when you somehow take a homotopy co-limit under the stabilization maps, then it will be. Uh, yeah, and so Deuce McDuff proved this uh, homology fibration criteria which is exactly the same as the quasi-fibration criteria, but now the condition is that some transition maps are homology isomorphisms. So basically you build up a, a, a map by gluing together fibrations, but we're gluing them along homology equivalences. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, it's the exact same 
condition as before. Um, yeah, so um, um, so this is sort of schematic. So, so the so to check this condition for, we need to know that a stabilization map induces an isomorphism and homology in all degrees after taking homotopy co-limits by the stabilization map. So, it's a better color. Yeah, so the homotopy co-limit under these maps T, if you take a homotopy co-limit of configurations in M by bringing a point in from the boundary, uh, then the stabilization map now is a homology equivalence in a range. So what you should do is you should think of, you should qualitatively think of this space as, you know, it's like the configuration space of points in M, but we sort of have, um, we've been, you should think of it sort of like we have brought infinitely many points in from the boundary. So you sort of have infinitely many points sitting here and arbitrary but finitely many points in the manifold. And then what does the stabilization map do? It brings in one more point, um, but now this is, a, is an equivalence because you can sort of move this point down to our pile. Um, yes, okay. So the sort of the, the, the um, analogy of why this is true is sort of the, the following. So let's say, um, yeah, so here's a, a lemma in algebra. So let's let R be a commutative ring and M an R module, and we'll pick A in R, and we'll let F from, um, we'll say M, this is a typo, M to M, be multiplication by A. And then maybe we'll let this uh, M hat be this co-limit. And then the claim is that multiplication by A is a, um, induces an isomorphism on M hat. Um, yeah, okay. So for people who are lost, they should at least start paying attention again and attempt to understand this slide. Um, yeah, so let's say um, we're doing this construction and we take R to be M and to be Z. Now let's say A is two. So then the co-limit of Z's under multiplication by A is this thing, you know, sometimes this is called, what is it, Z, I guess sometimes this is called Z adjoin one half. This is a different notation. This is, doesn't mean free abelian group on a symbol called one half. Um, so this is the this is basically the, the sub ring of Q uh, generated by one half. So you know it's fractions where the numerator is n and the denominator is a power of two. Um, yeah. So like multiplication by two is not an isomorphism from Z to Z. But multiplication for by two is an isomorphism on Z adjoin one half. So the idea is like taking a co-limit under infinitely many copies of a map produces a space where that map acts as an isomorphism. Someone should say something. So you can use co-limits to perform um, localization, sort of the idea. Um, two addicts. Uh, what are the two addicts? The two addicts are something different. 
Does someone who remembers the two addicts want to say why this is different than the two addicts or tell me that I'm wrong and it is? I think the two addicts are a limit, not a co-limit. Is that right? Um, the co-limit's different. It's a different co-limit, I think, because it's like Z mod P to the N to like Z to P. Isn't it a limit? minus one, I think. Is, is so. it like a limit? Is it a limit of like Z mod to, to the N instead of a co-limit? Um, yeah, so um, is, is it like if you take the two addicts is two a unit? Probably, I, I don't, I don't like limits, I don't like co limits. One who knows can say. I don't think so. Um, yeah, but so yeah, so th this is definitely yeah, this is localization. It's not it's not completion. Um, so you know the the idea here, where's this theorem? The idea is we're taking a co-limit under multiplication by t. And um, and then that means that the state, you know, that makes the stabilization maps, once, once you sort of take a co-limit by multiplication by T, whatever remains, T will act via an isomorphism on. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so this is sort of the, 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 the idea. And this this condition that the ring is commutative is um, is sort of analogous to implicitly there's an assumption that the manifold is two dimensional. All, if the manifold isn't two dimensional, then all the spaces involved, like you can check by hand that the theorems are true, but all the proofs actually require that the manifold is two dimensional. Um, somehow otherwise you wouldn't be able to move your point into the pile in the correct way um, yeah so th this lemma which you know is true by analogy with this fact in algebra checks this homology vibration criteria um, yeah okay so I think spectral sequences are the uh, main like tool that I wish I could assume, but that not everyone has seen yet. So for those people who have seen spectral sequences, uh, I'll like tell you what the proof is using spectral sequences, and then I'll maybe sketch about spectral sequences. So the statement says that if you have, um, if you have a um, two homology vibrations, and you have um, like compatible maps, so like a map from A to A prime and a map from B to B prime, um, making the diagram commute. And if you know that the map's an isomorphism on uh, the codomain and it's an iso on fibers, then it's an isomorphism in the total space. So, you know, if you like spectral sequences, what you should say is that homology vibrations are sort of the minimal condition needed to get a ser spectral sequence. And then these assumptions imply that the um, uh, that this map induces an isomorphism on the E2 page of the Serif spectral sequence, so it'll induce an isomorphism um, on what it's converging to. And for those of you who who don't know what a spectral sequence is, you can you can prove this theorem by like let's assume that everything is CW complexes. You can filter B by uh, the skeleton and uh, sort of prove it by induction on the skeleton. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, 
Now I'm worried about the fundamental group, but let's just move on. Okay. So, um, yeah, so basically what this says is that if you have, um, now I'm worried, uh, if you assume B to B prime is a homotopy equivalence, then this is definitely true. Uh, I'm, I'm worried, uh, you know, about pathological examples. Um, okay. Uh, I, I think I think assuming B to B prime is a homotopy equivalence <coughs> will actually be fine for our applications. But yeah, what, what, so before we, you know we like. Uh, the way we proved things was we sort of had like some configuration space, some configuration space, yeah, <coughs> some other configuration space, and then we had some section space, some section space, you know, and we had some some maps, and what you do is you would like you have this map, maybe this is configurations of. This is some relative configuration space, and then you have some projection map, and then you have the fibers or some other relative configuration space. And the you're we're doing like handle induction. So maybe this is the handle, and this is the simpler manifold, and this is the manifold with one more handle. And you sort of, you know, what you would do is you would say, okay, the red map is a homology equivalence. The green map, or sorry, the, the red map is a homotopy equivalence, the green map is a homotopy equivalence. So then you look at the long exact sequence in homotopy groups, and it tells you the blue is an equivalence on homotopy groups. And what this theorem is saying is, hey, you can just do the same thing using homology. So, you know, if you know that um, the green and the red are homology equivalences, um, and the horizontal maps are homology vibrations, then you can get that the green is an equivalent, so you can you can do uh, handle induction. You just need to set up like compatible sequences of homology vibrations. Um, any questions? Okay, so um, yeah, the um, so I'm gonna uh, sort of. Uh, so yeah, like I guess I've sketched the proof that under condition some, or yeah, so maybe, maybe let's um, look at an example. So we'll let M be a cube and we'll let N be two sides of the cube. So N is the, the blue and M is the entire square. Yeah, so N is two lines and M is a, a square. Um, so let's assume that, you know, you believe my proof that for these relative configurations, this map is homotopy equivalence. So, you know, we have the pi zero of n surjects into pi zero of m. So, you know, that's fine. And then what I want to do is I want to prove uh, for m that the map is a homology isomorphism, the Hokolim configuration space mapping to section space. I forgot to write Hokolim here, but it doesn't change the homotopy type. So that's less of a a typo, but less of a big deal. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna, um, so in general, we're gonna use our result for relative configuration spaces to prove the result for absolute configuration spaces, which is what we're probably more interested in. Okay, so we have, we have this example. So what are these section spaces? So um, the space of sections, um, in the case of M, this is just gonna be loops two S2. And then the section space rel n. Um, so here, the the sections like have to be um, oh yeah. So in, in the m case, in um, in this case, the sections need to be take value infinity on the entire boundary. But in this relative case. They only need to take value infinity on the top and the bottom. There's no condition on the on n, in the n region. So um, 
Um, yeah, so I mean, I guess, again, you know, first observation that, you know, section space is a, is a mapping space because the tangent bundle of um, Rn is trivial. Uh, and then now we just sort of have base points at the bottom and the top. So it's, you know, it's maps. This is maps from uh, a square, rel, it's top and bottom. And, you know, up to homotopy, we can contract in this direction. Um, so, you know, up to homotopy, all that matters is along one loop along, I don't know what this color is. Let's replace it with a color whose name I know. Yeah, so up to homotopy, all, all that matters is like what the map does along the yellow. And, you know, it has to have the base point at the top and the bottom. So this ends up just being you know, maps from interval rel the boundary, so this is just a single loop space of S2. Yeah, so on the, um, so that's what the, the mapping spaces are. You know, up to homotopy, it's just, oh yeah, this is a typo, this is, this one is maybe a homeomorphism, but this one is just a homotopy of homomorphisms. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I'm just trying to illustrate the proof in the example of a, of a cube and a cube rel part of its boundary. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick H to be this red thing. And um, so these top two lines are things we already talked about from the previous slide. And then the, the next comment is that um, that configurations of um, maybe let's talk about this bottom one. So it's in configurations of points in M, rel n union h is configurations of points in M, rel n squared. So it's like, why is why is this statement true? Why is the green statement true? So, you know, I guess H, you know, H is the red thing, N is the, is the blue thing. Um, yeah, so Y are, you know, and M is the entire square. So points in the square, rel, Two sides plus a middle strip. Why is that? Configurations of points in the square. Well, in effect, you're cutting the square into two square-like objects, rectangles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the comment is maybe let's change colors. Yeah. So as I think Nick said, hey, like, look at the purple. Look at the green. The green is configurations of points in a square that vanish if they hit either side of the square. You know, really it's a rectangle, but we're, we're topologists, so we certainly don't care about squares versus rectangles. You know, look at the green. That's, I think, this is what you're saying? Okay, uh, any questions on this homeomorphism? Yeah, and a similar thing, if you think about the section space, um, you know, the section space is gonna, just going to be a, um, you know, this product. Um, you know, if you're like, how do I have two loops? Well, look at what happens on the yellow. You have the left part of the yellow, then when it crosses the red, it's 
No, I'm confused. Oh no, this is the wrong picture. I think you'd. Yeah, sorry. You you know, look at the two yellow loops. That's the data up to homotopy of uh, the section because there's the maps are not defined on the blue or the red. So up to homotopy is just like what are their values along the yellow, and then they take the base point on black. Okay, so um, yeah, so what do you do? You sort of look at um, like configurations in N, in M rel N goes to configurations in M rel N union H. Um, and, you know, so this map's going to be fibration, sorry, homology fibration once you invert stabilization with fibers, configurations of points in H after inverting stabilization. And um, yeah, okay. And so, like, oh, I gave the wrong... My, my serif spectral sequence lemma was not what I want to use, but basically the idea is we have, um, you know, we have sort of two out of three theorems. So we know that, like, we want, yellow is a terrible color. Uh, we want that these two spaces have the same homology. And we know that um, yeah the, um, maybe I should should make the yeah so the I, idea is like uh, the green and the um, the green and the purple are homotopy equivalences. They're scanning maps for the green and the purple that are homotopy equivalences. And then the, um, you know, there's the map on the fiber, which is the blue. And um, basically, you know, uh, if you know, I, you know, I wrote down the wrong theorem, but if you know that the map on the um, base and the total space or homology equivalences, then you get that the um, or map on uh, you know, on the fiber is a, a homology equivalence, assuming all the maps are homology vibrations. I think this this would actually, yeah, actual. I mean, this is probably actually e easier to say. You know, ignore my my proposition. So, um, the the green map is a homotopy equivalence. The um, pink map is a homotopy equivalence. So the homotopy fiber, the homotopy fiber of the red map and the homotopy fiber of the yellow map are going to be the same. The yellow map is a fibration. So the, the fiber of the yellow map is um, the space underlined in brown. Uh, the red map is a uh, the red map is a homology fibration. So um, so so right. Yeah. So what we we want to show the the gray space and the brown space have the same homology. So I claim that because the yellow map is a fibration, the brown space is the um, uh, is equivalent to the homotopy fiber of yellow, because the brown is the actual fiber of yellow, and yellow is a fibration. Okay, and then now because green and purple are homotopy equivalences, that says that the homotopy fiber of uh, red and yellow 
are um, our homotopy equivalent, and the homotopy um, the homotopy fiber of the yellow is the brown space. So now the um, what do we need? Well, the actual fiber of red is uh, the gray, and the homotopy fiber of red is equivalent to brown. And so if you know that red is a homology vibration, it tells you that gray and brown have the same homology. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's the argument. So that tells you that brown and gray have the same homology. And then you might be like confused. Hey, I thought we were interested in M, not H. Well, M is homeomorphic to H. So, um, any questions? Okay. Yeah, so we've, um, yeah. So, uh, like my writing is not good on the slide. Yeah, so we want to prove this theorem that the scanning map is a homology equivalence in a range. And um, what we've done is we've proven this theorem when M is not compact. And I'm gonna, you know, in the remaining five minutes, I'm gonna say a little bit about what to do in the case when your manifold is compact. Um, so what you do is, you know, you pick a disk in your manifold. Uh, this proof will be like slightly suboptimal, uh, like it'll get the range slightly worse, um, but it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, so we pick a disk in the manifold, and you let um, this comp prime be the subspace where you have at most one point in, in your disk. And this inclusion of configurations of k points in M into, um, or k points in M with this condition that at most one point is in the disk into configurations of k points in M is a homotopy equivalence because you can do some sort of second closest point trick to shove all but at most one point out of the red region. So similar to how you know you construct a scanning map or think about relative configurations in the disk. Um, yeah, so we're going to build a map P from this config conf prime to a disk relative boundary. And what's the math? We're just going to take a configuration and send it to its intersection with um, the interior of the disk. And um, you know, if it's empty, we'll just map that to the point which is the boundary of the disk. So you know, we have disk closed disk rel boundary. Uh, if you have a point in the interior of the disk in the map, you know, in your configuration, send it to that point. Otherwise, send it to the boundary. And the, the fibers of this map are going to be um, configurations of k or k minus one points in the manifold minus the disk. So it'll be k points if your configuration intersects the interior uh, in the empty set, and otherwise it'll be k minus one points. Uh, yeah. Uh, because, you know, is in this case, we're going to have one point in the interior. Okay, so um, this map is going to be what's called a homology vibration in a range, and uh, a mapping of homology vibration in a range means that the inclusion of the fibers into the homotopy fibers are going to be surjections in um, top degree and isomorphism in all lower degrees. So this is a homology vibration in degrees less than or equal to D. You might say, oh, I don't like the surjectivity condition. You can rephrase this as the relative homology groups vanish in a range. And then the proposition is that this map is a homology vibration in a range increasing with K. And um, so we're going to sort of compare this homology vibration in a range to this um, Um, there's another map, so if you look at, um, there's an evaluation map, so if you have a section of the tangent bundle, 
You can evaluate it at, you know, pick your favorite point in the interior of the disk, maybe call it zero, contained in M, so you can, you have this, you know, this is my picture of M. You got this disk, and then you have this um, section, which is this possibly infinite vector field. And what you do is you just, the way you get a point in the sphere is you just evaluate your section at zero in the disk. So we get a map from the section space to the sphere. And, um, you know, this sphere is naturally the... Um, tangent fiber at zero, so maybe it's you know, not canonically isomorphic to Sn. Writing is not enough. This Sn you should think of as tangent space at the point zero, one point compactified. Okay. And so, the, you know, this map is a vibration, and then the fibers are um, are the uh, tangents, or the sections of the tangent bundle on M um, minus zero with um, base point conditions at the boundary, so including zero. And um, so, you know, if you want to prove the theorem, or for closed manifolds, what you do is you just compare th th this homology vibration in a range with the um, with this evaluation map, which is a vibration. And then the so the idea is um, that these two are equivalent. The fibers, you know, these two are homotopy equivalent. The um, and then the fibers are going to be section spaces or configuration spaces of non-compact manifolds. And so for non-compact manifolds, we already know the scanning maps homology equivalence in a range. And then it's sort of a two out of three thing. If we want to prove that this is an equivalence. We know the scanning map on the fibers are equivalences. And on the base, we both have, we have, we have spheres. So yeah, I'm out of time. Um, uh, there'll be less proofs soon, so hopefully it'll be easier to understand. Okay. Or more fun. Uh, great. Uh, I'll stick around for a minute if anyone has questions or wants to talk.